subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi chonzo Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday the 24th of November. India's Union Cabinet clears bill to repeal three contentious farm laws. Taliban release media guidelines ban shows with female actors. And Sri Lanka rolls back on organic farming goal removes ban on chemical fertilizers. And now for all the details. India's Union Cabinet on Wednesday approved the Farm Laws Repeal Bill 2021, completing the formalities to revoke the three controversial farm laws in the upcoming winter session of the parliament from November 29. The farmers have welcomed the move but warned their year-long agitation against the legislation would continue until their other demands including a law on guaranteed prices for all crops are addressed. India's Union Cabinet on Wednesday approved the Farm Laws Repeal Bill 2021, completing the formalities to revoke the three contentious farm laws which triggered a year of protest by farmers. This came after Prime Minister Narendra Modi on November 19 announced that the government will take back the laws introduced in 2020 in parliament's upcoming winter session. Though the legislation was introduced for the benefit of the farmers, the government failed to explain the benefits to them. The Prime Minister admitted, "We have completed the formalities to repeal the farm laws and in the upcoming session it will be our priority to take the to take back the to repeal the three farm laws in the upcoming session though the farmer community welcomed the move their leaders have warned their agitation would continue until the government promised to introduce a law on minimum support price or msp guaranteeing minimum prices for all crops ye jeet kahan ye to we le ke aaye the wo sangharsh hua unne wapsi le liye jeet to kisan ki jab hogi jab unko faslon ke daam mil jayenge Currently the government mainly buys rice and wheat at minimum support price but the safety net benefits barely 6% of India's millions of farmers. Withdrawal of a draft electricity bill which threatens to cut subsidized power for irrigation and penalties against stubble burning are also some of the remaining demands farmer leaders seek. A news from Pakistan Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has said that the growing foreign debt and low tax revenue have become an issue of national security because his government does not have enough resources to spend on people's welfare. He said the country's very sustainability was at stake because of the absence of a tax culture. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Tuesday said that the rising foreign debt and low tax revenue had become an issue of national security because his government did not have enough resources to spend on people's welfare. Inaugurating the track and trace system of the Federal Bureau of Revenue for the sugar industry in Islamabad, PM Khan said the country's very sustainability was at stake. because of the absence of a tax culture and he hoped use of technology would take revenue collection to rupees 8 trillion annually sabse bada problem ye hai ki hamare paas itna paisa nahi hai apne mulk ko chalane ke liye aur jiski wajah se main qarze lene padte hain aur ye humne jo jo ek jis tarah ghar bhi kisi ka ho agar ghar ke andar aapke kharche zyada hai aur aapki aamdani kam hai wo ghar mushkilat mein pada hi rahega Meanwhile IMF the International Monetary Fund which has agreed to revive a 6 billion US dollar funding program with Pakistan has rejected Islamabad's request to keep a door open for borrowing from the State Bank of Pakistan reports suggest this comes as finance minister Shaukat Tareen had earlier said the terms and condition of the IMF program had been made harder with reforms including withdrawal of tax exemptions and increased energy tariffs moving on Residents in Pakistan administered Kashmir have claimed the frequent price hike of gas and food items in recent days has adversely affected their lives. 
They have slammed Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan for failing to control the rising inflation, which has made survival of the poor extremely difficult. Amid an unprecedented price hike of gas and essential food items, residents living in Muzaffarabad in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have claimed that it has adversely affected them and have slammed Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan for rising inflation. They said that the frequent price hike has jumbled up the budget of the marginalized, making survival difficult. They claim that they are struggling to buy even basic domestic needs. <laughs> परेशानी हो रही है गरीब आदमी के लिए खास कर ऐसा जो आप ये भाई ने बताया कि 2500 रुपए का सिलेंडर हो गया उसमें गरीब आदमी क्या करेगा गवर्नमेंट को बहुत चाहिए इसके लिए हालात में ज्ञात पे गरीब आदमी को तरस पे मीनवाइल अकॉर्डिंग टू अ लेटेस्ट रिपोर्ट बाय रिसर्च कंपनी आईपीएसओएस पाकिस्तान और कंज्यूमर कॉन्फ्रेंस इंडेक्स 43% ऑफ पाकिस्तानस कंसीडर इन्फ्लेशन एज़ द बिगेस्ट प्रॉब्लम ऑफ द कंट्री The report stated 46% were clear that the country's economic condition is weak while 64% said they don't see any hope of improvement. The issue of inflation has also triggered protests in recent days with the opposition parties demanding snap elections to rid the people of what they term as illegitimate and incompetent rulers. A news from Afghanistan The Taliban administration has released a set of restrictions on Afghan media including banning television dramas that included female actors and ordering women news presenters to wear Islamic hijab or headscarf. Some edicts were targeted specifically at women, a move likely to raise concerns among the international community. Afghanistan's Ministry of Vice and Virtue has released a set of restrictions on Afghan media including banning television dramas that included female actors and ordering women news presenters to wear Islamic hijab or headscarf the ministry set out nine rules this week a taliban administration spokesman said on tuesday largely centered on banning any media that contravened islamic or afghan values some edicts were targeted specifically at women a move likely to raise concerns among the international community International Rights Watchdog Human Rights Watch criticized the rules and said media freedom was deteriorating in the country. Though Taliban officials have sought to publicly assure women and the international community that women's rights will be protected since they took over Afghanistan on August 15, many advocates and women have remained skeptical. Kabul residents say the first 100 days after the Taliban takeover had been difficult. expressing ongoing concerns about security and girls education Tros bai khater ba ma mushkil gazash ke ma mosh nadashtem va degai ke amniyat durust nabud anuz am intihari mesha ma ba tashwish hastem dega auladai ma anuz am dakhtara ba maktab na miran dars dars nis The United Nations has repeatedly warned since the Taliban took over that Afghanistan's economy is on the brink of a collapse that would likely further fuel a refugee crisis Meanwhile, State Department spokesperson Ned Price said on Tuesday that the US Special Representative for Afghanistan, Tom West, will visit Doha next week for two weeks of meetings with leaders of the Taliban. An abrupt withdrawal of most foreign development support after the Taliban seized power has sent the economy into free fall. Bangladesh's envoy to India Mohammad Imran on Wednesday lauded the role played by Indian political and military leadership in his country's 1971 liberation war during an event in New Delhi. This year is of special significance as both India and Bangladesh celebrate 50 years of diplomatic relations coinciding with the golden jubilee of liberation of Bangladesh and the birth centenary of its founder Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Bangladesh High Commissioner to India Mohammad Imran on Wednesday lauded the role played by Indian political and military leadership in his country's 1971 liberation war. Attending a book release event in New Delhi by Indian Army's think tank Center for Land Warfare Studies, the envoy underscored Bangladesh has tried to maintain cordial relations with India after the liberation war despite outstanding issues and changes in the democratic polity in Dhaka. 
Indian Army Chief General M M Narawne also praised the Bangla leaders who fought with the Indian Army to get an independent Bangladesh following a 9 months long war in 1971 against Pakistan. Therefore about for 2 millennium or even more we worked hand to hand with the rest of the today's South Asian nations including India sharing common political and administrative system culture and traditions faith and social practices and joys and sorrows the year 2021 is of special significance as both countries celebrate 50 years of diplomatic relations which also coincide with the golden jubilee of liberation of bangladesh and the birth centenary of banga bandhu sheik mujibur rahman moving on to news from sri lanka Sri Lanka rowed back on its goal to become the first country to fully adopt organic farming on Wednesday by removing the ban on use and importation of chemical fertilizers after months of mass protests by farmers and a surge in food price inflation. The government had completely banned chemical fertilizers when it unveiled a new agricultural policy in April. Explaining the U-turn at a weekly cabinet briefing, Agriculture Minister Mahinda Nanda Alud Gamage said only the private sector would be allowed to resume imports, which would still be expensive as a subsidy for chemical fertilizers would not be reinstated. The ban on all chemical fertilizer was implemented on April 26, prompting thousands of furious farmers to join streets demanding the government adopt a hybrid policy to allow both organic and chemical fertilizer. The chemical fertilizer ban combined with bad weather contributed to inflation hitting a 47 month high of 8.3% in October as food inflation rose to 11.7% amid falling crop yields. Sri Lanka has more than 2 million farmers and up to 70% of its 22 million population is directly or indirectly dependent on agriculture. The two-day monastic festival popularly known as Thikse Gustor in India's Himalayan desert of Ladakh saw a grand religious ceremony attended by monks, devotees and tourists. The festival which is celebrated over a course of two days concluded on Tuesday with mass dance, traditional rituals, colorful costumes and cheering visitors. The Thikse Gustor festival celebrated in Thikse monastery in India's northern Ladakh territory belonging to the Gelugpa sect of Tibetan Buddhism so hundreds of devotees and tourists descend to witness the event. The main attraction of the festival were monks attired in traditional outfits performing colorful mass dances on rhythmic beats of religious musical instruments demonstrating the victory of good over evil. In Tibetan language the meaning of the word gustor is sacrifice. The festival is marked by different kinds of ritual ceremonies folk music and traditional dances. Ki jitne bhi hamara problems ka roop jo hai hamara self dressing of self dressing hote hain iski wajah se hamare nana prakar ka dukh hua karte hain to iske liye iski wajah se bhikshu mangs yahan puja bhi kiya karte hain sath hi sath ek linga ke roop mein ek loop mein pura jo hamare dukhon hai jo uska dukh ka karan hai wo pura arg mein dala diya jata hai iska maqsad yahi hai Locals believe that this festival protects people from natural disasters, accidents and other calamities and brings prosperity and harmony. Tourists who had come to witness the festival were extremely happy with their experiences. Hey, uh, Tikse Monastery I have came here to see this tradition. It was very nice place to visit here. Uh, very good environment, good people are there. This was very first time I have seen here. This was very good. The tradition was very good. The two-day festival concluded on Tuesday with mass dance, traditional rituals, and cheering visitors. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again, India's Union Cabinet clears bill to repeal three contentious farm laws. Taliban release media guidelines ban shows with female actors. And Sri Lanka rows back on organic farming goal removes ban on chemical fertilizers. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at asianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.